So far in our unit on magnetism, we've learned that a couple different things can produce magnetic fields. Uh, and we have a little device, our compass, we know points in the direction of the net magnetic field. And we found out that uh, current carrying wires, so we have got a power supply, in this case it's supplying 5.3 amps of current. It's coming out of the high potential side, traveling all the way through the wires to the low potential side. And so this wire has a current flowing in this direction. And we found out in our lab that if we use our right hand rule, we put our thumb in the direction of the current and our fingers wrap in the direction of the magnetic field. And so we know that current carrying wires produce magnetic fields. If I shut this off, our compass points north. And if I turn this on and bring it close to our wire with current in it, now the compass points in this direction. So it changes the direction of the net magnetic field. We also found out that permanent magnets also have their own magnetic field. We know uh, a bunch of rare earth magnets like this stacked together act like one bar magnet and I've colored one side red to show the north magnetic pole and just to kind of show that uh, our compass, the red side of the needle is the north side, so it's pointing in the direction of the net magnetic field. You can see that it's pointing away from the red side of our magnet and towards the other side. And so we have essentially a bar magnet that has a north and a south magnetic pole. And so we know two different things produce magnetic fields. The interesting thing is when we combine them, we have a wire that carries current and a permanent magnet that has its own magnetic field. So I'm going to turn on our power supply. So we have, again, current flowing from the high potential side to the low potential side. And so we have current flowing in this direction. And if I have this permanent magnet, we know that there's magnetic field lines that come out of the north magnetic pole and go into the south magnetic pole. Let's see what happens when I bring this, which has a magnetic field, we introduce an, a, an external magnetic field to our wire that is current flowing in this direction. Bring it from the top. We can see that when there's current flowing through this wire, there's 5.3 amps. When I bring in an external magnetic field, it definitely seems to apply a force on this because it now it swings in, in a particular direction. If I shut off the current, now we just have a neutral conductor inside of our uh, rubber insulator that's surrounding that. If I bring that magnetic field in from the bottom or the top, we can see that it has no f effect. There's no force on this. So there's something unique about uh, a current carrying wire in an external magnetic field that that current carrying wire feels some kind of magnetic force. It happens when there's current flowing through the wire, uh, not when there's no current flowing through the wire. So this is a new force. Um, and I want to find out a little bit more about, well, what, what direction is this force in and how can we think of this? So uh, I'm going to bring in another stronger magnet. Just this a little bit so our wire can go through there. So we have uh, two magnets right here uh, producing a strong magnetic field. And I guess we don't know where the poles are on this permanent magnet. So let's, uh, let's use a compass to figure that out. Looks like our compass is pointing away from this bottom surface and towards that top surface. And we stick this in the middle. You see that in between those two, there seems to be a, net, a really strong net magnetic field up. And if we let our wire hang here, we've got a magnetic field direction pointed straight up. Uh, there's no current in there, so there's no magnetic force on that wire. And I'm going to turn our power supply on again. And remember, the current is going to flow in this direction. 
We're going to have a magnetic field that's pointing up. Let's find out what is the direction of the magnetic force on that current carrying wire. So when there's current flowing, there seems to be a, a force in that direction. So we have the current flowing in this direction. The magnetic field lines pointing straight up it seems like our palm faces in the direction that the magnetic force is felt. We shut it off. We shut the current off. We can see that there is no more magnetic force. Well, what happens when we switch the direction of the current? So I'm just going to switch uh, which color is connected to high potential and which color is connected to low potential. So now the black wire is connected to high potential, so the current is going to flow this way through the red wire back to the low potential side. So we're going to get current flow in this direction. Our net magnetic field lines are still up, so let's, let's kind of use our right hand to see if we can infer what direction the, the, the force will be. If we keep our thumb in the direction of the current, our fingers in the direction of the external magnetic field, notice that the palm now points this way, we would expect that it's the wire, the current carrying wire is going to feel a force back in this direction. Let's see if that happens. It does swing back out in that direction. So uh, if we use a right hand, uh, this is a different right hand rule. So we had previously, when there's no current, remember, if we put our fingers in the direction of the current in the wire, the wire produces a magnetic field that curls around in concentric circles in this direction. And this is going to be a new right hand rule. We're going to call this the right hand palm rule. So we're still going to use the thumb for the direction of the current. We're still going to use our fingers for the direction of the field, the magnetic field, except this, in this case, it's going to be the direction of the external magnetic field. And our palm is going to face in the direction that the magnetic force is felt. So let's go back. We have our current flowing in this direction. Our external magnetic field is pointing up and it feels a force, if I turn the current on, in the direction of the palm like this. Well, let's see what happens if we reverse the direction of our magnetic field. Is that still consistent with our new right hand rule? Okay, so let's just check our compass. Now the north pole, the north magnetic pole is up top, the south magnetic pole near the bottom, so we have magnetic field lines pointing down. So I haven't reversed the direction, we haven't switched the leads at all, and so we still have current flowing in this direction. Now we have a magnetic, uh, external magnetic field pointing down. This is where it gets a little tricky. So far, current is flowing in this direction, the magnetic field is down, our new right hand palm rule suggests the force should be in this direction. When we turn our current on, indeed it is. Well, let's find out if we um, kind of reorient our magnetic field. Notice uh, in the last case that we talked about, we have a magnetic field that is down, a current direction this, and we have the force in that direction. They're all mutually perpendicular to one another. Magnetic field, current, and force. So I'm going to change the direction of our magnetic field. Turn our current off. So our force is out. I have our current flowing in this direction our magnetic field lines are now in the direction of my fingers like this. Notice our current and our magnetic field lines, our external magnetic field lines are not perpendicular anymore but the force is still out. It's still perpendicular to the plane of the current and the external magnetic field like this. Okay, and If we keep rotating this, see that when there's no current again there's no force if I turn this thing on, now our current and our magnetic field are close to the same direction, but there's still some magnetic force in that positive direction. So this is going to be our, our second and our new right-hand rule. It's going to be 
called the right hand palm rule. Remember, the thumb is the direction of the current, the fingers, the straight fingers point in the direction of the net magnetic field in the location of the wire, and the palm points in the direction that the positive charge feels that force. And remember, by convention, we imagine current as the flow of positive charges. And so if we have current flowing in this direction, which is positive charges, and the magnetic field lines are up, the wire feels a force in this direction because each individual positive charge feels a force in that direction. So a right-hand palm rule applies to currents, wires with current in them in a magnetic field, and it also applies individually to positive charges moving in the direction of the thumb would feel a force still in the direction of the palm.